to Deep Dive Dance YouTube channel and our interview series Artist Talks, during which we meet various personalities inside of dance universe. My name is Anton Balbauer. I'm a founder of non-profit organization Deep Dive Dance, which is hosting and organizing this interview. Today is our episode number 16, and we have a very special guest, wonderful, inspiring artist, prima ballerina of Ballet Zurich, winner of multiple prizes and awards for her artistic input, Yen Han. Apart from her full-time dancing career, Yen Han is also artistic leader and founder of both Yen Han Dance Center and Yen Han Ballet Productions, located in Zurich. Before we begin an interview, I would like to remind you to click a like button on this video. This way, YouTube will recommend it to more people and it will help our community to grow. Thank you, let's begin. First of all, uh, thank you so much for willing to participate in my small project. And it's really wonderful to see you and uh, reconnect with you after quite uh, many years that passed that we haven't been in touch. So thank you so much. Thank you, Anton. Thank you for having me. I think it's so wonderful that you're doing this. It's just heartwarming to see all my colleagues doing different creative works and for you to be like interviewing journalism. It's just wonderful. So thank you for asking me to be a part of this. My first question to you would be, how did you discover dance in your life? I started dancing because my mom, I, I think that's like every little girl that their mom put them in ballet. <laughs> I didn't know what it was about. I actually, I started with doing gymnastics with my cousin. Uh -huh. at, like um, it's an after school program from the city. And after the gymnastic classes, I would see girls coming in with their ballet clothes. And so I, I told my mom about it and she said, oh, that's ballet. And then she was very keen to have me there because as a child, she always wanted to learn ballet, but didn't have a chance. And she was put into piano instead. So she took me and she said, no, you have to try ballet. So that's how I got introduced into ballet. And that was my first step and it's been like my whole life now. <laughs> when this uh, first contact translated into something more serious, when did you know that this is something uh, you might be want to do in, for the rest of your life, so to say? The thing about dance is that I start to very much enjoy the challenge and the perfection work that we can never really achieve, but it's always challenging to discover new things. And that's what I really love about um, dance in this form. And I think ballet has given me a lot in this way to discover myself and the art of movements and just the freedom of expressing. When I was 14 years old, I got a scholarship at the Hartford Ballet School for a summer workshop. And that was the first time when I went there and was surrounded by other professional dancers and also serious dancer like myself. Just in that summer workshop, there were some you know, ballerinas from the Hamburg Ballet that came. They were there and I watched them dance and I just completely fell in love with the beauty of this art. And I just wanted to be like, like them, like to dance so nice as they are. And <laughs> when I came back home that summer, I said to my mom, oh, I want to be, you know, I want to train more and I want to go seriously. And that was when um, I took it in a further step of just being a hobby dancer doing yeah. two times a week. Jumping quite uh, quite further forward and to the times when you joined the Tsuri Ballet. And um, uh, you have spent many, many years uh, with this uh, wonderful company. Tell us about what Zurich Ballet means for you now, after all those experiences that you had. I came to this company when I was very young, like I was 21 years old. I was the youngest at the time in the company. They didn't have any junior company, so I actually was really the youngest. I was immediately feeling very welcomed by all the dancers because we had a lot of mature dancers and very versatile. Looking back, I feel like Zurich Ballet has just from the first start made me feel very welcome and at, and at home. And it made me feel this way throughout my whole career. Yeah. I was very fortunate to be um, like an announced uh, soloist right the first year when I got there because there was a transition of director and 
he kind of really liked me and he was giving me a lot of opportunities and started choreographing for me and then so they ended up promoting me that same year and this is just to my fortune that then I I completely um, decided that that was the right step just to continue on my career here where I'm appreciated because I think most of the time dancers like to go to different companies and have different experiences but for myself I just felt like well um, why leave when you're appreciated somewhere yeah. and at the same time I was giving all the roles that I could just dream of and would never have imagined that I would be dancing so I stayed and I think it really was the company where um, it built my personality it made my it gave me a lot of input in my life it was I met a lot of very amazing wonderful teachers and choreographers and I survived through three directors <laughs> all very different but it was wonderful I learned a lot from them and they were very much also uh, nurturing me and guiding me the same way and supporting my work I must say, I'm, I'm very grateful. There's nothing I can complain about to be in the house. <laughs> and aside of that, it's not just the dancer, but the whole house itself. We have a, a wonderful staff of like all the technician, the the um, mask people, like makeup people, the hairdresser, costume department. It's just a really nice, nice uh, tight bond of family. And this is where I really felt the past um, 25 years that I was. And the moment you became a principal dancer of the company, was it something uh, special for you or how you received that news? Of course, I was very happy. And I just remember that, um, yeah, I think it's just a funny feeling to be so young and you just got a principal dancer contract. And then my first big role was doing the Firebird from the uh, Fokin. Uh -huh. And it was the, from Barry Osof that he mounted the last Firebird before he passed away and I was his last Firebird. I was just very excited, of course, and you don't feel like, okay, that's it, you know, because every ballet that we come up with, a new production is always a new challenge and you have different things that you have to work on. So I don't think that just having the title of the principal dancer um, made me felt like I was complete or anything. It just basically perhaps give me a certain title and a better, better salary. <laughs> but, but it's just the responsibility that goes with it. It's actually more of a burden because you have to live up to your, your position and you have to be responsible. So therefore, being at that young, I, I do have to carry a lot of responsibility already to make sure that I deliver, that I earn my title. Yes. So it, it's a non like hard work process non-stop of hard working yeah. to keep on progressing of course you had many wonderful memories and moments that during all these years with the company but uh, is there one moment uh, that really stands out mm, i think it's really hard to say there's been so many memories and i've been dancing like for decades that i just feel like yeah. I'm like, you know, grandma on stage still <laughs> compared to other kids. But I guess I can say that there are moments where certain roles that you dance, like maybe, like I say, the first Firebird was very special for me because that was the first big role that I have. Romeo Juliet created on me uh, from French Burley, different premieres and then, or, you know, working with Matsek for the first time or with Kilian and for the first time. And these are just memories that there's so many memories to cherish and every ballet that I come into or any new work that we do, yeah. bringing new things. So it's just a lot. Yeah. If you can remember still the feeling, what it meant for you to be on stage, to performing in front of live audience? Well, most of the time, I think like it's always a bit of um, you get a little nervous. And I think I still I still feel that way no matter when I perform, it's just a little, it's not a nervous where you can't move anymore. It's more like an excitement. And this never really goes away um, because it's always a matter of um, pushing yourself to be fully there for that moment to not think about anything. And I find that is the hardest sometimes. It's not just about knowing the steps, but to be fully focused at the time that you're there 
to yeah. be completely mindful and engaged. That always gives me a tickle in my belly. That oh gosh, I have to pull myself together to be there at that time. The first time that I went on stage with a big role, I was very nervous, and I just think, oh my gosh, I'm just thinking already at the end of the ballet how it should be, <laughs> and it just makes me really nervous. <laughs> and I was so young, and I'm just thinking. And then I just have to take a deep breath, and then I remember my partner said, "Just take it one step at a time." And then we did that. I took one step at a time, and I listened to my music, and I just go with it one step at a time. And then toward the end, it was like, "Oh, it's finished! Oh my God, I did it!" You know, so I think. It's over. And I must say, like this actually still goes on now because even at my age now and dancing sometimes you just have so many things and you're just going like oh my god is it gonna you know you're gonna do it and then you have to again go back to the same basic like okay just do it one step at a time and I think the hardest thing for me is always just to be completely there and to be completely focused and this is very quite like a meditation I find to dance. Yes, you have to be completely aware of the situation at the time. So this makes it enjoy very. It's a pleasure then to be on stage. Yeah. <laughs> When and how did you start teach um, kids ballet? I started teaching um, while I was still dancing. I mean, I I founded the school with my husband over 10 years ago. And I started teaching before we took over the school. I just wanted to see how it would feel to be um, teaching. I've always taught a little bit. Like I played the piano, and when I was 16, I was already teaching like little kids, five years old, um, how to play the piano. So that was like my little pocket money. You know, we come from a humble family, so of course I always kind of had to make money somewhere to to. Um, get my way around if I want something extra. So like during the summertime, I always taught like little kids or so. So it's not really new for me. But of course, I never was thinking that that would become like a second part of my life where I would completely um, devote myself into it. Yes. Um, at the time, I didn't know what I wanted to do because I think as a dancer, you're fully devoted to the dance and to the work that you uh, give into dance and we're quite basically focusing only about ourselves and about how we have to deliver the work that we have to bring on stage or to the choreographer. I don't know if I could take on another job with so much dedication again. Yes. Um, I would, I think sometimes I think I would just like to have like a nine, nine to five, like really not serious job that you have no responsibility, <laughs> but I think that's not really possible in, in life. Yeah. So I started teaching to my friend, um, to my friend's kids, and as a tryout, just that they wanted to dance. So I said, "Sure, I can teach them." And then it started to be quite fun, and we had a lot of fun. And I also loved the fact that I see progress, and and they love it as well. Yeah. And that's the, um, and that's how it gave me the. Um, I mean, of course, my husband encouraged me to have the ballet school, but. After teaching, I realized, like, okay, actually, it's quite nice. Basically, I'm just passing on my knowledge. The most important qualities that you try to pass on to your students. I think, I mean, for me, I always want them to not ever forget the pleasure of dance. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we are so focused on perfecting everything about lines and technique and the aesthetic of it. And I just want to always remind them, like, sometimes it's fine, you know, to make mistakes and you should just move and try to just enjoy the dance and don't take it too intense especially when you're young i see like kids nowadays sometimes they're so like already at such a young age they put so much demand on themselves and they forget that actually it's not that serious that dance should just be fun because for me now i'm still having fun dancing of course it's serious what we have to deliver but it is just entertainment and it's just like performing and we should have fun doing it And I think that's what I want to always share with my students is that they must never lose that spirit of having fun. After this, uh, the opening of the school, school it's also a, a kind of has a part of Yanhan Ballet Productions, right? Yes, so we opened the school. Um, we first have the Yanhan Dance Center in Pitikon uh, of Zurich. 
-hmm. And then um, I just felt like, um, well, my husband founded this other place and he said, well, this is really great to fulfill what you want because I always said like, oh, I would like to have in Zurich another platform where um, we could have another small company, like a quality, classical or dance, modern, whatever, but of um, nice quality dancers and also a platform where um, the young students that graduates or who wants to continue in their professional career that they could bridge this um, gap between study and performance. And I would love to provide that for them because um, my school where the, the first school where we have the studio is rather small, so it's quite limited. And of course, when the student gets to a certain level, then I always try to tell them to go away to bigger school. But at the same time, I also felt like there wasn't enough jobs for dancers. If you would work as a bank or whatever job, when you leave, then you could always find another job in the same city. But yeah. I always felt it's a shame that dancers would have to change completely their whole life and living space and countries or cities, whatever, if they're no longer in the opera house. I just wanted to be able to also have a platform where we could still have a creative ground and have artists to remain in Zurich and still um, perform or to um, do their choreography or to work and to have a second little company and so on. Of course, this is what I hope for and that's why we're doing this now. And of course, that's also an opportunity for my younger students when they get to the age where they need to have a professional experience that they could also take part in what we do. And in February, we made an opening where we danced our first ballet company's production. Because uh -huh. I'm working together with our house choreographer, who's an old-time colleague of mine, Felipe Portugal, and also Ken Osola, and he's also a part of our team to choreograph. I find it wonderful that, you know, I have them on board because they love, they're so talented and they're young and full of energy. So we had our first inauguration of the company in February and we opened with a very good um, success and a lot of audience. And then the Corona came. So. <laughs> yeah. But we haven't stopped even though Corona, we're still going on with productions and dancing. And You mentioned some of your hopes so what are your hopes and dreams for for this um, production uh, place? It's housing the ballet company as well as the second school of uh, the school. And I have a professional program, which I really want to build it to a stronger level. And then I'm also working on having a, an association where um, that people could give donations into and so that I could uh, support other projects in our company and as well as the professional program mm -hmm. offering scholarships and work for other artists and choreographers and so this is my hope that I could get this association going mm -hmm. um, but the, of course it can happen but I want to have a tax um, exemption the tax exemption and this is very hard to get this way the burden is not only on me but then it becomes more a shared project with the society that I do the work and that we could somehow still support the arts and continue with it. So this is my hope that this will happen. Actually, everything is supporting one and the other. Yeah. Um, then the company will then have uh, fixed dancers that can be here, not just on freelance project, but they could have, they could settle in here. Mm -hmm. And then of course, this will also give opportunities for the young dancers to eventually also after graduation that they don't have to leave Zurich to work abroad, that we could be a regional company. Basically a lot of things because where we are now with our second home, we are able to have our own little theater space. We could um, transform the studio into a, a performance area. So this already gives us a lot of independence mm -hmm. to um, produce projects, produce ballets and just perform in our own place rather than having to have invitations um, before we could produce something. Yeah. So I think we have a lot of potential. We just need now time and um, a lot of courage to not let this pandemic put us down and stop the work. We just have to keep going. Yeah, I, I think my hopes are high, but I'm not giving up. <laughs>
No, aim aim for the stars. You know how they exactly, say. No, exactly. It, it sounds really wonderful, and I really hope uh, all of it can be achieved with work and dedication. Because I know that you are very dedicated to things like this, you know, professionally. So I'm sure you know your energy brings people in, and it will somehow happen. I, I believe you know. I'm fully committed and devoted to this project now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> into teaching and it's I realized that yes I can be devoted to something else than just myself dancing and it's really rewarding me with a lot of good energy and seeing all the happy faces that uh, the dancers are uh, feeling when they they can perform and I love to see the young generations learning and being so motivated <laughs> What would be your advice to young and um, aspiring dancers? Because I think people always think, oh, dance career is so short. So, you know, so a lot of time this makes our the dancers very frustrated thinking like, oh, I have to get there. I have to make this. I have to do that. So this creates a lot of mental stress in a sense where that they feel they are always under pressure to do squeeze a lot of things into their life. Mm -hmm. And then they forget that it's about having fun and enjoying also the moments. I think dance is very, it's very important that we have to stay mentally healthy. And so I always encourage the students and, you know, that first of all, you have to be mentally very um, positive in a sense where to think positive thoughts and to know that your career can still be very long depends on where you want to take it. So if you put a lot of pressure on yourself and wanting to think like, oh, I have to achieve that by 21, I have to achieve that by 25, and so on and so on, then you end up not having the pleasure to to enjoy what you're doing, but rather than just feeling that you're chasing after that pressure. And this can create a lot of tension and injuries and a lot of negativity in the work that they carry, rather than just enjoy, even if, you know, one has a small role. I've danced small roles before and mm. or even like not dance at all and and but just to enjoy that. And I think this like positive thinking is very important to keep yourself as a dancer um, in a very good path. And then you end up actually being much more productive and it grows much more fruitful yes. rather than negative. And yeah. then it ends up that you might end up dancing like like for centuries like me <laughs> yeah no absolutely it's very important um side of of uh, that mental health uh, of dancers or athletes in general as well it's uh, often over overlooked somehow people forget about yes that. because the mind is the strongest muscle right and that's the first muscle that direct derogate everything that we do with our body Absolutely. so if your mental if your muscle here is not really working then then it's very hard to produce the best work that you can produce so the psychological side is probably the first thing that we have to think about so i think a lot of time it's very important to have good counseling and i was fortunate in my life that i always had very good mentors and mm. positive inputs given to me to keep me on a very positive path. And I would love to continue doing this for other people and other students that are coming across my way with their educations, yeah. My last question, why dance is important? Oh. <laughs> I do feel that it's very important because we are always Naturally, we love to move, right? I think dance is actually a very natural instinct, whether you're dancing professionally or not. Yeah. If you ask anybody, they just love to move. Even if it's just, if you put music, then people just love to move. Yeah. That's just a natural instinct. So I think that's just so a part of me that, that I feel like, yes, I love to move and love to listen to music and to be with the music and feel the rhythm. And when I do move, I do feel free because I do feel that it's a sense of expression that I could completely just let myself be free and to move. And then at the same time, you start to discover so many things about yourself and your body and everything. And yes, I think with dance, I learn about myself, my personality, my 
who I am, what I'm able to do, the challenges. I think it's uh, very important in this way as we are connected with our body. Let's put it this way. Dance makes us feel connected to ourselves. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. awesome. Thank you, Anton, for having me. I think it's wonderful that you start interviewing as many people as you can and let the audience know what is behind the mind of all the artists and what is their um, creative ideas and what they drive for. Thank you. Have a good evening. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you found this interview interesting and inspiring. Have a look at our Artist Talk playlist right here, where you can find many more interviews with wonderful, fantastic artists. Remember to support dance and art. From me, Anton Valbauer, and on behalf of Deep Dive Dance, we thank you. Until next time.